Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Kelly Copeland Swisher's with us today, telling us some things we really, really need to know, and it's been great. So if you've missed any of them, go, go back online and check them out. Kelly, welcome. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for teaching us. I tell you, most all of us were not raised under the Word of Faith from the time they were babies, but you are blessed and you've turned out to be a great blessing. Thank you. And your mom and dad are proud of you. Well, I'm tell you what, I'm so proud and pleased. You know, people say, well, don't say pride, don't say proud, but I make my boast in the Lord. That's what Paul said. <laughs> so I make my boast in the Lord because he put something inside of you and you took it. Praise you and God. dad took what he offered you and you walk in it every day. And I just... I love Thank the you. example that you set for us and the word that you put in us. You said, I'm teaching you something. I, you've taught me to put this word in and have faith in That's it. That's right. That's what it takes. And so it's really not that hard. Right. Life in God is not hard. Oh, it's hard. much easier than living without. It's I mean, it's, <laughs> it takes some determination at first, but then the results last all your life. It doesn't even take that much determination after a little while. It's really acceptance, I guess, would yeah, be a better word. You know, I, I'm, in Matthew 7, it talks about the gate. It says that, uh, you know, that narrow, the, is, the narrow is the gate, and people... And, and, you know, broad is the way of destruction. You can do things your own way or the world's way so many different ways, it's not funny. I mean, broad. That's a very broad, open spectrum. Yeah. But to do things God's way is as narrow as this. And it's good. But. It's the blessing. It is the blessing. But, you know, that path is straight. Yes, it is. It may be narrow, but it's straight. And there are really no surprises and nothing that can knock you off. And the blessing of the path is on Because that path. the blessing is on that oh, path. Hallelujah. And God works things out for you. And, but in the Amplified, that word gate, it says it's complete pressed with pressure. And so the way I look at that and, even, and the way I look at the f walking in the things of God, it's only as you step into it, really, that that pressure and it's hard, it's only as you're making that decision, decision. making that choice, making that lifestyle yeah. choice, it gets easier. making that, uh, letting the word correct you and put you through that gate it's the gate that's compressed and pressured. That's a good point. But once you're there, Rachel, I was teaching this one time, Rachel said, Mom, you realize when you go through a gate, once you go through the gate, you're in a different place. Oh, yeah, that's good. Isn't, isn't that it? good? Mm -hmm. So once you get through that gate, that decision time, that I'm doing this and gritting your teeth, you know, and just say, I am not going to do things another way. Once you get over that part of it, then it's, it's really... And there's an ease and a blessing and a, and a lack of pressure there. Oh, my goodness. Because yeah. you're no longer responsible for Life the outcome. That you just abundantly. do what God said, and he's responsible to bring fruit to you. Mm -hmm. We're going to really kind of show you in the Good. Word some places where he's, now, see, he makes himself up. responsible. You grew up in the Word, but Ken and I learned <laughs> as adults in debt, didn't know any better than be sick, two little kids fighting with each other. <laughs> Did you have two others I didn't I know about? I just threw that in. <laughs> and uh, so we ha we learned as adults in debt and with problems and, you know, more than we could handle. And, man, was it ever good to learn how to live by faith and not by sight. And it only got better and better, didn't it? We got it? out of debt in 11 months and, and didn't go in debt again and had abundance. Began to increase. And you, the more you walk in it, the more you increase. And uh, I mean, after 40 or 50 years, you really got something going here. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't take that long. It gets better instantly when and you get on the Word. Because I... now you're not in it by yourself. Things begin to work for you. Right. And it might take you a little while to get out of the problems that you've created, like a borrowed money or whatever, you know. But you'll get out. And it's marvelous. And then the increase that continues to come. I mean, yeah. do all your children serve the Lord? Amen. Are any of your grandchildren running from the Lord? No. They love you guys. Everybody 
loves y'all and and, and wants to bless you. Yeah, they're, they're dedicated, dedicated to, to the Lord. Lord and and when sickness tries to come, what happens? They say no, no. And when lack tries to come, because it still tries it. to come, but you resist with the word, and you always that's win. Right. Always come out on top, and that's what the word says is supposed to happen. It's a good life. In it Jesus. is. It's Hallelujah. worth that initial pressure of changing the way you of do the things. Narrow way. The narrow it, it way. It seems narrow at first, but really it turns out to be the broad way <laughs> because you're able to do or whatever you're told to do, and you know, poverty's put behind you, sickness put behind you, all the curse. If you really go on with the Lord and you do what He says, all the curse is a thing of the past. And there's only blessing. That's so good. Ooh, I, I love like it. it. It's the truth. It's true. But without, you know, we talked yesterday about that three-step process. Without that three-step process, you have to hear it. Hear it. You have to listen to the Word and Pay obey attention. it. That's All really, right. there is no, li if you don't obey, you're not listening. That's right. So that's act. A part of act it. On act on, on it. Hear it. Listen to it. And then that third part is given by the Holy Ghost, by the Lord, that that understanding is not something you have to drum up. No. But it comes Revealed. by revelation. Yes. It right. comes by the Lord giving that understanding. And he said if the more closely you listen, Mark four, the more understanding you'll be given. And he said if anybody has ear to hear, let him hear. That's right. It's our choice to hear and listen. But then he said, You've closed your eyes, Matthew thirteen. So you don't see. And he is, this is Jesus diagnosing the human situation. That's right. And he oh, said, you have, he's, Dr. Jesus has said, you closed your eyes so you don't see. You closed your ears so you don't hear, so no understanding is there. But Jesus is diagnosing the cure. And so he says, you know, a doctor might say to you, take these pills three times a day and you'll feel better in two days, three days, whatever. You may or may not, the side but the doctor may kill you will say, yeah. but, go but ahead. the doctor will say, if you do this, you'll get better. Okay. But Jesus, so Dr. Jesus says, lest at any time, lest at any time, you would hear and see, I should heal you. Less than any time you change the way you're doing That's that. Right. Less than any Just time you open your me. ears and eyes. Anytime you get in agreement with me and in the word, with the word, Jesus said. You'll be blessed. And he didn't even say wait three days. No, he didn't. He said, lest anytime. at any time they would do this. And I'll we found that them. to be true. And it's true. Yeah, for and a lot so, of years we walked in the blessing. And it always and it worked. Just is always there. Sometimes you, you have to stand. God. Yes, you do. But you know what? I don't. Somebody asked me the other day if there had been something y'all struggled with for a long time, and I'm like. I tried to think. I couldn't think of anything mm -hmm. that took a long time to get an answer on. I mean, we've they had things I think that it we took us eleven months to get out of debt. And you were a newbie at it. We were brand new. I mean, we were learning. But you had faith as we went. But uh, so it, no, really, it's, it's if not you a struggle. This way. The struggle is living without the That's word right. That's and the trying truth. to do things on your own, not paying attention to what God says, going ahead talking unbelief, blackness, sick, disease. That's the struggle. That's right. But when you make that turn. And you begin to agree with God, and what, and you begin to say it, it begins to happen. And and, and so it's a blessing called blessing. blessing. But without that, without that, you're not going to get the fruit that He says we no. can have, you're, and you're not going to get the understanding. You got to get it in your in your mouth and in your heart, in your heart and in your mouth. Right. The Word of God in the heart, in the mouth. You can't just have it in one place. If you want victory, you have to have it in two places, the heart and the mouth. And the mouth and part... And it has to go in the ears. The mouth part's not hard when it gets in your heart. No, it's a, out It's of very the natural. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus said if you had faith, you'd say. I mean, that's, that's right. the result of having faith. That's, that's the result of the word being there. in your heart is it makes you say. If you'd have, if you have you'd faith, believe it. you'd say. So mm -hmm. if you're saying unbelief, you know that you have a faith problem. You have faith in the wrong thing. 
<laughs> which is called yeah, doubt a, in the a word. Word of faith. <laughs> word of faith. <laughs> so what we have to have is the hearing and the listening, and without that, without those two things, understanding doesn't come. Without this three-step process, fruit doesn't come. Fruit being proof that the word is true, That's or right. these things occurring, actually healing the in your life, being the blessing manifest. in your life. So I, I had this story that I wanted to tell today. Um, and I was at home by myself. And oh, good. It's not the one where I jumped over the fence. And... No. Okay, good. <laughs> my mother. <laughs> you never get, I hardly ever saw you get mad. I mean, you just were a, such a good example of, you just put a grip on yourself and, you know, very rarely, very rarely did I ever see you get mad. A few times, but not much. And after much provocation, you <laughs> might lose it. And that's all a good record, I think, for, you know, I'm 48. Am I 48? I'm 48 Somewhere years in, yeah. old. So it's been a while I've been watching you. But one day I was at home and I was mad at somebody. And I was cleaning the floor with, the, I was vacuuming. Have you ever vacuumed mad? Mm, probably. It's very productive as far as getting you it get done. You get it done fast. I'm vacuuming. With them. I'm t and nobody was home, so I was talking out loud to the Lord, which that was a good forward step, I guess, from, you know, what I could have been doing. You were doing. venting. I was venting to him. And I was vacuuming, and I was mad, and I was telling him all what somebody did to me. And, and, I'm, and I didn't even, after telling him, and I didn't even stop. And I'm like, and you're going to make me forgive him, aren't you? <laughs> and I, he didn't even really have to answer me. But oh, I stopped vacuuming funny. after I, and really what that was, was the word was in there. I knew what you I had what to do. To do. You and it do came it. out of my mouth and told me what to do. And so I stopped and I said, all right, Lord. And I can't tell you that this warm feeling towards the person that made me mad came up inside of me or anything like that, that I did what I was told to do. I have to walk in love. That's right. It doesn't matter what somebody does to That's me. Right. I know I have to walk in love. That is in my heart. And I know that to do this, I have to forgive when there's ought against me. I have yeah, to, I can't right. have ought against anybody on I me. Mean. Not if you want the blessing to work. So I stopped and I said to the Lord, I said, okay, you told me to forgive and I do. In the name of Jesus, I forgive so-and-so and I walk in love with them and I let this go in Jesus' name. That's what you do. Yeah. That's what you do. And so just immediately, I mean, it's going to take me, I, I'm going to, I have to work fast to get this whole story into this broadcast. So it's going to take me, you know, 10 minutes or whatever to tell you the rest of the story, what the Lord showed me. It took him this long to show it to me. Yeah. I mean, when I had ears to hear what he said, which is that word coming up and saying, you're going to forgive yeah. him. Acting on and then word. I listened to it and I did it, even though I wanted to just keep being mad. Um, understanding of his word came. And just a few days prior, I had re read in John 15. So if we go there, I'll show you what the Lord showed me. He says, um, he's talking to the disciples and he's preparing them to, for them to be without him. He's preparing them. And really, they could have listened better to what he was saying. They didn't really hear. And so it caught them off guard when all the the cross and all that happened, it caught them off guard because they hadn't been hearing him. Mm -hmm. They weren't listening to what he was saying the whole time he's preparing them for him to be gone. But he talks to them about remaining in him and he talks to them about fruit. And so he, I had read this just a few days before this incident, but I didn't get out of it what he gave me that quickly. So he says here, I'll just skip through some of this, but he says, remain in me and I'll remain in you, this verse four. Um, a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine. So you can't be fruitful unless That's you right. remain in me. And so he says, um, those who remain in me and I in them, they will produce much fruit. And then he goes on to tell them, how do you, so the question would be, how do I remain in you, Jesus? If that's what takes to produce fruit, how am mm -hmm. I going to remain in Jesus? And so he says, um, 
Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, Jesus continually said to out loud, he doesn't do anything without the Father. John 530, we'll read it later on this, this week, but he said, I can do nothing of myself. He has to remain inside his Father to do anything. But he tells us, you have to remain in me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Right. So as an example, he shows us how he remained in his Father and what he's telling us, just like that, you remain in me. The way you see me remain in my Father, you remain in me. And so um, he says, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch. You wither. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. He didn't want you to be separated. He wants you to remain. But it's our choice to remain. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. So we want that last part. There's a lot of people that want that to yeah. come true. But you have to remain in Jesus and let his words, his instructions remain in you. Don't let anything right. take them out. Don't forsake them. You know, Paul was constantly saying to whoever he was writing on, grasp this. Hold firmly, Timothy, to the word. Yeah. So we have to keep his word in us. When you produce much fruit, you're my true disciples. Disciples. So in other words, when you truly follow him and do what he says, then you'll produce much fruit. And that, That's right. a fruit producer is the, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but this is the billboard that says this person is a disciple of Jesus. That's true. It's God. the fruit that lets mm -hmm. people know. You'll know them by their by fruits. their fruit. So That's he says you'll says. you'll be truly a disciple if you produce much fruit. That means you're listening and following. Mm -hmm. I have loved you, even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. So there's the key to remaining. He obeyed His Father, so He remained in yep. the Father's love. If we obey Jesus, we remain in Jesus' love. I've told you these things mm -hmm. so you'll be filled We're with abiding. my joys. Yes, my joy will overflow. So this is where joy comes in. When you remain in His Word, joy is the result. This is my commandment. Okay, here's what he's going to tell us to do. If we can't do this, then we can't remain in him. He says, love each other in the same way I have loved you. Well, he loved me by putting aside what he wanted That's to right. do or what Absolutely. mattered to him so that he could love me. With his whole heart, he loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, this is where he put something in me I'd never thought of before. Now, I have read this scripture, and probably you have too, many times. And you think about there's no greater love. And who I think about when I read this is Jesus and what he did for yes, me. And there's yeah. no greater love than what Jesus did for me. He laid down his life for his friends. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is not referring to himself or his love for me that he laid down my li his life. He's saying to me, I'm telling you to walk in love. Mm. When you lay down your life and you lay down what matters to you and that somebody hurt you yeah, and, right. and somebody did something to you and you laid all that aside to do what I've commanded you to do and walk in love, Jesus is saying, there's no, there's no greater love than that. And I thought, and that came to me in just a second. It was like Jesus said to me, in, in that moment, when I did what he asked me to do, it was like he said to me, that's the greatest love you could give me. That really hit me hard. Praise God. Because Jesus true, is saying to me, mm -hmm. my love for him is the greatest love that he can experience is when I do something that he asked me to do. Yep. Even though I would like to do something different. <laughs> and it just felt all of a sudden like I'm his friend. Praise God. I'm a, you know, people saying, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. You're, you're a friend of God if you do. You know, it says it's Abraham true. was God's friend because he did what God asked him to do. That's how you become a friend of God. But Jesus is like, I'm your friend. You're my friend. And he says, Amen. you're my friends if you do what I command. See, that's what he's saying. 
you're, you did what I asked you to do and there's no greater love than that. You're my friends if you do what I command. That's good, Kelly. And he says here, I chose you, this friend. I'm choosing my friends. And he says, I appointed you to go. And he's not the one determining whether we're friends or not. He's not saying I'm oh, friends yeah. with you and I'm not friends with That's you. Right. It's me determining if he's my friend or not. That's good. And this says, I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. He wants us to do what he says so that fruit can be there. And he's appointed us. He's asked us really to produce fruit. But once we choose to do what he's and asked us to do. love is the first do, fruit of the Spirit. Love, well, and all of the peace. others come out of that. That's exactly and all right. of the real fruit as far as good things happening in our life work when we walk in love. This is true. He says, I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love that each other. That is so good, Kelly. So I thought, all of a sudden I thought, Jesus is saying to me, you have a special place in me because you're doing what I ask you to do. And he's saying, what is it that you want? I'm going to make myself responsible for the result of it. You go ask in my name. What do you want? What a privilege. I'll, the Father will do it for you. I'm telling you, I'm putting my name on it. The Father will do it for you. What do you want? Hallelujah. And that right there, right in that split second, that understanding came to me. What do you want, Kelly? I'm telling you when that came, no longer was I even thinking about what somebody had done to me. That's like, doesn't even matter anymore. No. And I'm like, I'm stop, you know, I'd stop vacuuming. I'm talking to the Lord in my house. I'm like, you know what, actually, Lord, there are a couple of things. And that day I asked him for two things. And one is on its way to coming to pass quickly. I don't, I don't even think about it hardly anymore. It's not even something I confess and confess and confess because yeah. I want it to come past. You've received I it. have so totally put that in his hands because my friend, my buddy said, what do you want? I'll make sure it happens. And so I haven't even thought about, I don't even think about it in an aggressive way. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing was we were having uh, difficulty getting pregnant because we wanted to have a baby and we didn't know it was Emily, but we, need, we wanted Emily, you know, and we were having difficulty getting pregnant and we were believing God. And I said, yes, Lord, there's one thing, I, there's something I really want now. I want our baby. And it was not long after that that we got pregnant and not only did we get pregnant, but the pregnancy was easy. The, we didn't have any medical help, just Jesus helped getting pregnant. And at, my, and at my age, that was actually quite something. Yes, it was. And we uh, had an easy, you were there when she was born and was. delivered. And it was really such a peace of God about it. Just the delivery was just was as easy. It was amazing for me. I don't know how it was for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I know I was on the, uh, in a different uh, responsibility part of it, but I, it really was, and she it is really such had a precious a, girl. Oh, and you know what? She, tr she's amazingly anointed to do what we do. She travels, she loves people. She meets us, no strangers. But she came out of a place in God and a place with Jesus that I didn't know existed until after I had heard the word. Yeah. I chose to do it no matter what I wanted to do. And this understanding came to me. And what happened? It brought forth fruit. Excellent. It's amazing. Praise God. Thank God for the blessing. You know, if you're in Christ Jesus, the blessing belongs to you, hallelujah. You can have what, it, what your desires are according to the Lord and according to His will. He'll do it for you. It's good to have babies. Is it not good? It is. It's a blessing. Kelly and I'll be right back. As a believer, all of heaven's power is available to you. Knowing how to access it is another story. New York Times best-selling author and world-renowned Bible teacher Gloria Copeland presents the expanded legacy edition of her timeless book, God's Will for You. 
This book presents the covenant of God, the benefits of salvation, and how to access the power of God for your life in a way that everyone can understand. God's Will for You Expanded Legacy Edition is a road-tested handbook that reveals how to effectively release the power of God in your life today. God's Will for You Expanded Legacy Edition includes a never-before-published chapter, God's Will is Prosperity, in which Gloria connects you with the true definition of prosperity and its purpose. Kelly Copeland Swisher's dynamic CD, Having Ears to Hear, is free with every purchase. This teaching positions you to hear and do the Word of God. Well, we've had a special guest drop in the studio today. Emily is here. Emily Swisher is here. Welcome, Emily. Tell everybody hello. Can you wave? Can you wave at everybody? Wave. Mm -hmm. Emily is a wave. sweetheart. She is a good girl. She is growing up. <laughs> She's checking it all out. So welcome, Miss Emily. Over here. Yay. <laughs> Over here. Over wave. There. Wave at that guy. Wave. Yeah. Oh, she's waving at her friend. She's a blessing. She she's is amazing. a blessing. It is amazing, Kelly, that you were able to conceive and have such a perfect little baby That's at your true. age. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Oh, good job, Emily. Good job. Yay, Emily. Great. Glory to God. Well, we have a speci another special thing for you today, God's will for you. Uh, this is the expanded legacy edition with some more things added to it, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And then Kelly's uh, CD on having ears to hear. Are your copies today? You know, it's a great book for people to give to friends and family that are le just learning or maybe don't know anything about the Lord. It, but God just gave it to me to give to people that are new, maybe, or old. So it's just the Word of God, but it's revelation. And uh, we want to pray for you today. Father, thank you for healing the people, blessing the people. I command you to be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You, Take your healing in Jesus' name. Take it. Say, I have it. I take it. I take it, it, Emily. I take it. In Jesus' name. The Believer's Voice of Victory magazine is a free monthly publication by KCM. Almost 570,000 magazines are mailed each month to our partners around the world. If you're not receiving it, I think you'll enjoy the articles and testimonies. It's free. Let us know and we'll send it to you. It'll help you to live in victory. We'll see you again tomorrow. And remember this, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Thanks for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on KCM, visit kcm.org. Online, you'll find free ministry resources to help you live every day in faith. Receive God's promise that everything is going to be all right.